G'day Humanoid Life Forms. Today I'm taking on the 10 minute challenge set by Blue Bike and Doyle that was followed up by the Gorilla Biker. After this little intro, you're going to hear the uncut 10 minute talk. I hope I made it to 10 minutes. All right, let's see how I went. G'day Humanoid Life Forms. Chewy here. In this video, I'm bringing you the Gorilla Bikers 10 minute talking challenge. Oh yeah, did you hear that? Got to start with a rev bomb, and you know what's going on here, I'm heading out onto the freeway. The freeway that is not so free, and not so much of a way, because it will be congested. You've seen me do this before, and I had a bit of a, a lunatic swearing attack. Well, this video is very, very different, because I'm going to be talking about for 10 minutes. It's now 4.18 p.m. 10 minutes straight, uncut, I'm going to talk about dirty, dirty jobs. Jobs that you've done that you hate, jobs that you think that you would never ever want to do, jobs that you've had to do in one-offs, helping other people out that you just, you just, you just can't bring yourself to think about wanting to do those jobs ever again. I'm going to begin. My first job, well it actually wasn't my first job, my first job was delivering papers and it was not a very lucrative job for the amount of money. However, it enabled me to have some money to do things like slot car racing at the time. That's right, little slot cars around the big track, the really fast ones. Pretty good hobby to have as a little teenager, 12, 13 year old. A little bit of fun. When I turned 15, I got my first real job at... Dun, 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 the Golden Arches, that's right. McDonald's and I managed to last three months that's it three months and I told them to shove it not in exactly those terms because I was only a 15 year old dealing with adults the day in question I was doing an eight hour shift and after about six hours I went to the manager and said can I have my break and he said oh you can have a break after you go and empty all the garbage bins and I said, no, well, I think this is the last time that I, I work here. I'm quitting today. And he said, well, you may as well go and take off your uniform and put it in the office right now, mate. See you later. So I did. That's right. I quit my first job after three months working for the lucrative McDonald's franchise. My next job, I worked at Kmart. Kmart was good to me. I enjoyed it. Great people good managers, good working conditions, decent pay for a young person. A young lady and I, Carolyn, we were the two youngest people to be employed as supervisors in that role. There was some conjecture around the idea, some of the management didn't like the idea, however the two of us were responsible enough to take on that job. I think we got an extra dollar per hour for running the front end, running all the registers, the checkouts. That was in the days when you had to ring up and get authorization for every credit card purchase over $50 and write down an authorization code on the slip. Remember the old slips? Back in the old days. I enjoyed that job, it lasted a long time, it got me through university and, and, and um, f you know, first loves and cars and guitars and all of that sort of stuff. Really cool. So that wasn't a bad job at all. I was a guitar teacher for a while, that was my main shtick. Feels like my bike should go up another gear. Anyway, it doesn't. It's in sixth gear already. I'm doing just under 110 kilometers an hour. I'm doing just over 100 actually, about 100. 5,000 revs. A little bit of my job after that was to do a bit of on and off stuff here and there where I worked in little factories and stuff. The worst job I ever had was three days of putting stickers onto lids. That's right, stickers on lids in a factory. A conveyor belt, boxes and boxes of plastic container lids and rolls and rolls of stickers and putting them on a machine, stacking the boxes once it had done its job. The most boring days of my life. Holy smokes, I would never do that sort of manual labour ever, ever again. Around that time I became a traffic controller as well. 
standing on the side of the road with a stop go bat has to be one of the most laborious and boring jobs you could ever think to do. Hours and hours of standing on the roads in traffic in dangerous positions, doing double shifts working all night sometimes. The first time I ever earned a thousand dollars after tax I did a 72 hour week. That's right 72 hours in one week and that would have been in 1999. What a job that was. Boring as hell. Not bad work, just boring. And the money was alright when you got the night shifts. I also did a few jobs here and there working on the roads with a shovel or a jackhammer. The longest shift I ever did was 17 and a half hours on a 90 pound jackhammer. One of the ones that runs on a compressor with a big hose. That was excruciating. Back at the time I didn't have a car or a license. I won't say why I lost it, but I lost it. And I had to ride my bicycle back to the shed after, I mean I had to ride my bicycle to work to the shed to get in the car and go all the way over to the airport in Sydney. And then uh, it took me about an hour to ride the bicycle to work, to arrive there at 5 in the morning or 6 in the morning, I can't remember exactly what time. And then after the end of this enormous 17 and a half hour shift, I had to ride my bicycle back home. My poor hands, I couldn't even open them, I couldn't even hold the handlebars of the bike, I had to lean on the bike like that. Absolutely crazy, it took me about two hours to ride the bicycle home in first gear, just half asleep, leaning on the handlebars. What a horrible job. That was excruciatingly painful. Then, stupid me, became a bricklayer. That's right, I was a brickies labourer. I know how to make mud, I know how to move bricks, I know how to make scaffolding. And then after a few months of doing that, I think it might have been, even been about a year of doing that, my brother put me on the trowel as a bricklayer, so I learned how to lay bricks quite quickly, and I did that for a few years. In that time, I actually finished my university degree. It took me 10 years to do a, a four-year uni degree. That's because I kept wanting to be a rock star. Bricklaying, very, very difficult on the back, very difficult on the hands. A bit hard on the shoulders at times. But um, the lower back is, is what really copped it for me. I've built houses, I've built a mansion up in the Blue Mountains, one of the most beautiful homes you'd ever see, for the CEO of Rothman's Tobacco. He wanted an identical home to the one that he built in England, the one that he lived in. It was a four bedroom brick house, and it had 100,000 face bricks, it had 110,000 commons, it had block work, it had sandstone corner work. It was a beautiful, beautiful home. It took a team of, I think we had about four or five, maybe six bricklayers at times on the job, plus labourers. It took us a year and a half to build it. I finished my uni degree after one year of that job, so I didn't work the last six months of that job. As I started that job, I was just building the walls. By the time I finished that job, I was the one taking down bricklayer's work and rebuilding it because it wasn't to spec. The only what was going around with a tape measure at the end of each day and measuring that all the joints were 10 mil. What an idiotic thing to do. The original quote for the house was something like five and a half million dollars, not including the land. And by the end of it, he was up over seven million dollars because he was so fussy. That house was beautiful. The brickwork came up. It's, it's the only brickwork I'm extremely proud of that I've done. Beautiful, beautiful work. Anyway, after that, I finished my uni degree and I, I got into the blue collar world. I don't have to disclose what job I'm doing right now because I don't really want to. What jobs would you never want to do? I saw that truck stop and reverse and have to put up with the pressure of traffic and man, I could not imagine driving a semi-trailer in the city during peak hour. That would have to be one of the most stressful jobs ever. One of my mates over in the US, Ian Landsman, he's a dentist. Man, kudos to you, my hat's off to you. That's another job that I just could never do. I could never be a doctor, a surgeon, a dentist, uh, a vet. I get a little bit squeamish at the sight of other people's blood. Not my own, which is weird. 
I've bled plenty of times and it doesn't worry me one little bit but seeing other people go through pain I just can't tolerate it it really really irks me it makes me feel sick I don't know if it's empathy or stupidity or what can't detach myself which is really funny because I've just been given an opportunity this in the next couple of days to do some photography at a kickboxing event in preparation for that I decided to watch some UFC and I watched that title fight for the, the two women and um, oh man that poor woman I think she was Russian I'll put some details up up here somewhere that woman's face she looked like Quasimodo at the end of it she looked like the elephant man it was horrendous so I don't know how I'm going to go on Friday night when I'm photographing this kickboxing event if I see anyone with some severe damage I know I'm going to have a hard time trying to you know just keep it together and keep focused on the job and that's what I'm going to have to do I'm going to have to detach myself that will be a challenge for me worst jobs man there's some some jobs I've done digging holes just on my own property and things like that to do some plumbing digging holes is hard work anyone who has to dig holes all day my god you have got the strength of 10 men that is some difficult work especially when you're digging on clay when the ground is soft it's not so bad but when that ground is hard and you're using a, a pinch pinch bar to, to actually separate the dirt that is extremely tough work I wouldn't never want to do that again uh, tiling uh, what's it called um, patio tiles the, the landscape tiles the the big um, pavers paving I've done that a couple of times I did it for a friend of mine up at Woi Woi on his house laying the really big ones and oh man my hamstrings at the end of two days of doing that I could hardly walk that was crazy painful so you blokes you work hard concreters I would never want to do that roof tiling I would never want to do that you can stick that in your clacker put that in your pipe and smoke it who wants to be a roof tiler especially in Australia when it's 47 48 degrees sometimes now have a look at that little Mazda that is beautiful that is a superb car. I hope I can catch up to it. I've got some mates who are motor mechanics. And I've got friends who like tinkering on even Lean Ian Landsman again does his own bike work and loves doing it. I hate doing that sort of work, especially on little cars with little very little space to get your hands in. Even this bike here. I not I one of the um, the crash protectors the oggy knobs came off this bike I've got it still in my backpack there oh, runny nose I can't fit my hand in there to get the bolt back on the end of it my hand is too big how the hell do you do it you must be a little person with little hands but then again these mechanics some of the blokes I see their hands are massive and tough there's aspects of it that I enjoy but there's other things that I just get too frustrated with and when you just miss that one nut or bolt and you can't figure it out oh, holy shit don't I get frustrated when I have to do that sort of work does anyone remember what time I said I said it was I don't know have I gone 10 minutes yet it must be getting really really close it's 4 31 right now I don't remember what time I, I started the count but it's got to be close to 10 minutes if it is 10 minutes I'm going to cut the video right now if it's not I'm going to keep talking just in case because I would hate to think that I can't keep up talking for at least 10 minutes the gorilla biker this is your challenge I'm going to put it out to you how did I go leave a comment below Mr. Gorilla Biker and let me know give me a rating out of 10 as to how you think I went talking for 10 minutes do you think the topic was suitable what are your worst jobs what's the things that you've done that you hate what is a job that you would never want to do I would never want to be a surgeon I'd never want to be a dentist they would be to me some of the worst jobs I'd never want to be a truck driver on busy streets I'd never want to be a miner oh actually I am claustrophobic I am completely claustrophobic and I only realized that once I was in an MRI machine and I had a real meltdown it's a it's a severe thing I've never had a panic attack before until that day and I didn't understand that that was even a real thing but once I'd had a panic attack oh man I really can empathize with anyone who's had one an anxiety attack or a panic attack I, I, 
I thought I wouldn't be able to breathe again. It was so horrific. So yeah, anything in a confined space, that would be the worst. Underground, no way. When I was a child, I always wanted to be a pilot. And I have actually flown a Cessna. I never, never took off or landed just while it was up there. I got the flight. My dad was in the back of the plane and he's dead scared of heights. I swear to God, you've never seen an olive skinned man turn as white before. <laughs> and that was a lot of fun. Just slowly rolling, banking left and right. He didn't let me use the feet controls, just the hand controls. So that was pretty cool. Just like, just like playing a video game, I suppose. I'm pretty sure I've talked for 10 minutes. So that'll do me. Until next time, humanoid life forms. This is Chewy. Be good to each other. See you later, guys. Peace.